No, Peter, I thought that was that was an awesome backdrop in terms of the market. No one better than you in terms of understanding the market and the dynamics. And look, I think we've been through some hard times this year with the tariffs, as me and you have talked about. But we've stepped back. Like, we stepped back from the cliff. And now you're starting to get a 15 to 20% blended tariff, give or take, and probably negotiated lower. And ultimately, we're in the biggest tech boom in the last 40, 50 years, the AI revolution. And it's my view... I mean, you have talked about this for years. It started off as just NVIDIA. Then it went to Microsoft. But now our whole view is it's the second, third, fourth derivatives playing out. It's the trillions of dollars of spent, not just from MAG7, but as this kind of, what I believe sort of, for every dollar spent on NVIDIA chip, there's an eight, ten dollar multiplier across tech. So that's why we believe we're in a tech bull market, not just the rest of this year, next few years. And I think when you focus just on valuation, you've missed every transformational growth stock the last 20 years. And, you know, I think Palantir being a good example, right? Like they hated it at 15, despised it at 40, yelling from the mountaintops at 100, 150 screaming from the airplane. And at 200, they'll do the same. And I, I think Palantir is a trillion dollar market in the next two or three years. And I, I just say, you know, a lot of times people be like, well, is this a bubble, dot com? I cover tech stocks in the bubble. And Peter, me and you have talked about this so often. Like, this is real use cases, real spending. We're talking about it's, it's going to be changing not just the way companies. But consumers, like it's my view, like autonomous and robotics are the holy grail. Like when we think about physical AI, and there's one chip in the world fueling that, and that's led by Godfather of AI, Jensen, NVIDIA. So it's my view, like when, when you look at this tech earnings season, you come out more bullish relative to even where we were a few weeks ago, because it's validating the theme. And it's not just about MAG7. We talk about in our Ives AI30. It's about the second, third, fourth derivatives playing out. And, you know, I think the, the goal of here, I, you know, Peter and I do this so often in terms of, you know, on our podcasts or publicly or talking to investors. It, it's a unique perspective because I see it more from tech analysts, the spending, what we see around the world. Peter sees it up close every day, what the trading looks like and everything. Now, I mean, I'd say, Peter, I'd, I'd pose a question to you, like, what's your view of how investors are positioned heading into, let's say, post-Labor Day, whatever, into, into you know, August, post-Labor Day? Like, does it feel like there's going to be, like, a risk on, there's a lot of money on the side? Like, what's your sense in terms of the types of activity you're seeing? No, I was going to say, and really retail... When you think about the sell-off in April and May, they held firm. Institutional really sold. Great to see your outfit, too. It's always fun to see what you're wearing. Thank you. Um, it's interesting that you come out with this note and you say, is this going to be, is there a BlackBerry moment waiting for Apple, which really implies the worst situation for a tech stock yep. after a massive rally? Here. This doesn't alleviate any of those concerns. Look, I think the biggest, look, there was a huge concern on tariff, playing nice in the sandbox with Trump. That clearly has alleviated that in terms of the India, the China tariffs. And, and you've seen the stock lift from it, and it was way oversold. But the elephant in the room, it's this AI revolution, this strategy right now, it's essentially invisible for Apple. And you think about everything that we see in big tech across the board, it's an F1 race. Mm -hmm. passing them by, and Apple's essentially in Cook on a park bench drinking lemonade. So our view is, whether it's perplexity, doubling down on Google despite DOJ and other antitrust issues, bringing new management in under Cook, they got to do something because time ultimately, we're talking about three to six months, that they have to make a big move. If they stay on the treadmill, and I think that it does cap some of the upside. One of the things is you say do the perplexity acquisition. Can they get there um, effectively having some sort of AI search available on its iPhones, on its devices, without making an acquisition? No. I mean, I, I, I just continue. There's a better chance of me playing in Ryder Cup in September 
than Apple innovating internally on AI. I think that's, there's a 100% chance that that is not happening internally. So then it comes down to, for a company that has never acquired, beats three billion, right. biggest acquisition, you got ripped the bandit off. In other words, now's the change, because I can tell you from talking to developers, everything we see in the ecosystem, it has to be acquisitions. And it can't be small deals, undisclosed, two years from now, we're still waiting for this. You have the biggest install base in the world. You have 1.5 billion iPhones. This is the time. And look, and I continue to think, I think Cook should be CEO. We believe he's been a Hall of Fame CEO and should continue to be. But it will tarnish his legacy and the Apple future if they miss out on the fourth industrial revolution that's right in front of us. Mm -hmm. To me, it's a threat, but look at the advertising. I mean, the reality is, like, I'm not saying it's not a long-term headwind, but they're also going to benefit when it comes to AI significantly on the cloud. Mm -hmm. And Google, as we've seen again and again, they're going to be able to pivot. And that's I just don't view it as a, a massive threat like maybe some others would view it. That's right now the balancing act. And you're seeing, like, look, Jensen, Cook, Nadell, I mean, everyone is whatever they say publicly behind the scenes. I mean, they're trying to make sure that this whole thing navigates and you don't look, the goal is you don't want to burn the house down just so you can meet the firefighters. So it's very Are you worried important that that could happen. It is going to be a big part. You think some of the parts, I mean, that's how you get an increment. We have $200 press target, like $30, $40 upside. I think more and more as the cloud story plays out. Hey, Dan, we saw that uh, President Trump He's kind of made some comments about towards some of the European regulators about maybe stepping back some of the regulation of artificial intelligence, AI. How, how important is that? Well, Paul, I mean, and we've talked about it before, right? I think it's all part of this broad negotiation because big tech has had a bullseye on their back from Brussels and EU for years, right? I mean, fine. Are you worried I mean, that could still happen? Uh, look, I think the biggest worrying area is around the China. You need to see a de-escalation. I mean, look, the reality is, like, let's just not talk fairy tales. Let's just talk math. You see the ships. You know the inventory. You know price increases are going to come. I mean, look, GM, they essentially cut their numbers by 20%. So right. when you look what's happened in tech, you have to separate that from the rest of the market. And look, but the market's up, and, and Tuckman and I obviously talk about a lot, is that the market's up because deals is on the horizon, whether it's India, South Korea, and then eventually China de-escalation. Right. Let me ask you this, and I want to get your thought on Apple and your thought on Amazon specifically. However, uh, whenever we speak, I usually say to you, what do you love? And you say, I, I love this, 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 this. Do you still have a, a lineup for me? I mean, if I oh, say to you, do you like tech? Do you, are you going to tell me buy tech now? For big tech, or almost like getting a cup of coffee when it comes to what's happened in Europe. But when it comes to AI, look, there, I mean, this is a hard line stance. And I think it's actually all part of even the broader tariff negotiations in terms of them softening the stance. And that's, look, and that's something big tech has obviously been a huge advocate for because they essentially Europe's like off almost off touch like you can't even go into that market right now no or no of course Nicole when we talked last that was a total different world I mean I even wore a black jacket right I mean the point is like that was a total different situation now if you look from Palantir to Nvidia now having I believe you know pretty good insight to what we're going to see over the coming quarters relative to the demand trends. The hyperscale or CapEx is not pulling back, which is why we continue to love Microsoft, continue to love Amazon. And then, of course, when it comes to names like Tesla and Apple, right? I think Tesla, I mean, think about it, for, for Musk, that was a fork in the road moment. He chose the right way. He chose Tesla. And I think history is going to prove that was a decision that I think will be Cloud and AI. I mean, really, the key focus is what does spending look like? Is CapEx holding up? We believe it is. I mean, I think big tech this week is going to be more of a confidence booster. No, because it, when, like, obviously with China, they're not going to lay down to it. They, right. They've said this morning 34% tariffs right back on U.S. Of course. Goods. And then I think it also comes down to, like, the, the tariff chart 
which continues to be a sci-fi, you know, sort of comedy show, those are not the right tariffs. So, so it starts with like, what's the number you actually even start with in terms of negotiations? And the longer this stays on, you can't stop a snowball from st- once it starts. So the point is like, do you burn the house down, but you still have a bagel in the toaster oven at the end of the day? And I think that's the frustrating thing right now for tech investors. Stocks are not Republican or Democrat. They speak volumes to what they're showing you, and I think that's the problem. Rather than putting gasoline on the fire in terms of the fears, I think right. that's the important thing we're gonna see from big tech. I think Alphabet was just sort of a little preview of what we're going to see this week. We spoke to the point of China retaliating with additional tariffs this morning. How does all of this play into the fact that the U.S. has been the dominant place for tech investors for so long? Does China start to outcompete the U.S. on tech? It's a great, but just even go back to for years, the reason China was such a bad market, you didn't know what the party was going to do over a weekend. So you couldn't invest in China. Right. 